running away. Running the wrong way is any time we run away from God. How well Roy Regals knows this. On January 1st, 1929, Roy Regals went into the Rose Bowl against Georgia Tech. He was the center and the captain of UC Berkeley. He left the field indelibly known as Wrong Way Regals. <laughs> there was a fumble. He scooped up the ball, lost his bearings, and ran as fast as he could toward his own goal line with his teammates running after him as fast as they could, shouting that he was running the wrong way. The play resulted in a two-point safety, which was the difference between winning and losing that game. Equally poignant to me was what happened in the locker room at halftime. Wrong way Regals went in and put a blanket over him and put his face in his hands and just cried. When it was time for the team to go back out to the field, everyone headed out except for wrong way Regals and coach said, come on. And he said, I can't. I've ruined you, coach. I've ruined my school. I've ruined my life. I couldn't go out into that stadium and face them for anything. And the coach said, get up and let's go. The game is only half over. This is the fourth in our sermon series on worship. The last element of worship is sending forth. Being sent or being commissioned into service for Jesus Christ is, isn't just something that we do after worship. It's an actual part of worship. We devote one hour to corporate worship on Sunday and then we have 167 hours left in the week to devote to other claims on our time. Worship is never over when God sends us forth to reshape our lives and the lives of others in various ways all our life long. The game isn't over when Cheryl begins the postlude. Frederick Beekner says of our decisions about how we use those other 167 hours of our week, if you want to know who you are, as opposed to who you think you are, pay attention to where your feet take you. I suspect many of us are more akin to Jonah than to the first disciples. And I'll get to them in a minute. God gives Jonah a mission impossible. Jonah has no missionary, no preaching credentials. He's a small town guy being asked to go to uh, Iran and preach repentance. Preach, stop those acts of terrorism, give up your nuclear ambitions, turn in your IEDs for sackcloth and ashes. Mission impossible for us. Maybe not so when it's God's agenda. It seems that all we can do is just try to manage our calendars, our children who'd rather text than talk to us, focus on our increasing job demands, and try to keep the house picked up and soccer clothes clean in time for the next game. We have legitimate excuses, don't we? 
for going the opposite direction when God calls us to care for other people. When God insists that our real family is larger than our nuclear family. But God persists in our lives just as much as God does in Jonah's. We can hide in the belly of a fish by sticking earpods in and turning up our iPods, but God's canny, God's clever, and God's creative. <coughs> Whether you're spit out like Jonah, or waked up in the middle of the night, or plumb out of energy with boredom, or cynical about what kind of difference you can make. These are just some of the ways that we underestimate ourselves. Some of the ways that we underestimate God and God's persistence with us. You've heard the saying, when we make plans, God laughs. Well, God keeps calling, or using Kate's and my favorite latest word, the Holy Spirit will invade our souls. Jesus calling Simon, Andrew, James, and John is quite a different story. They drop their nets immediately. They leave Daddy Zebedee behind in the boat with the hired men. Similar to Jonah preaching just eight words, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Jesus too uses just 10 words and the four disciples are on board or rather off their boats and running. Follow me and I will make you fish for people. Really? Come on now. Do you believe it's that easy or that immediate? Is it too good to be true? What is it that we don't know when gospel writer Mark leaves out details like maybe their fishing isn't very lucrative anymore? Or maybe the kingdom sounds like a lot more fun than night shift out on the lake? Or maybe the disciples are just impulsive or tired of the same old, same old. Maybe Jesus had a compelling flash in his eyes as he claimed the disciples for himself. Or maybe they caught a glimpse of the vision that Jesus holds out to them. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom has come near. There's an urgency to Jesus that we ignore when we respond with, well, let me first think through my options. What will happen to my career and my family if I adopt kingdom values instead of the values with which the world tempts us and draws us. Or before following, I need to weigh the consequences. But in the face of urgency, Jesus doesn't give us weeks and months and years to think things over and check our calendars and make carefully thought out plans. <laughs> The opportunities to serve pass us by when we hesitate. It's amazing what God can do with our ordinary and with a minimum of words. Remember what Kate said last week? Proclaim the gospel. If necessary, use words. More importantly, the opportunity to be transformed, to receive a new identity passes us by when we clutch our safety nets and huddle in our life jackets waiting for the high winds and the hail to pass. Jesus isn't just giving us a task of casting our poles and pulling in a haul. 
Jesus gives us ministries. Jesus doesn't say, I will make you fish. Jesus says, I will make you become fishers. This promise is about a whole new life, about giving ourselves over to God's vision that challenges the status quo. Saturday the 14th, our elders took up the challenges and the responsibilities of chairing session committees. Some of them have landed in different boats. Some of them feel as if they're out on a whole new lake. Right now, some of them are anxious and scared. I'm not. I see God working in their midst. First, to transform their anxiety to trust. Then, to transform them in ways that none of us can even yet imagine. And on that same day, new deacons joined experienced deacons. The newbies wonder what they'll encounter in hospital rooms or living rooms or beside deathbeds. In these encounters, they'll be changed as they bring a bit of the kingdom with them to people they don't even yet know. The call to service survey which you will be handed, every one of you, when you leave, is more than just an inventory of your time and talents. It's Jesus fishing for you. These boxes that you check are more than just jobs you think you might be able to do if you can find the time. Our call to serve a survey is your opportunity to say yes to Jesus. To drop the nets that encumber you and break free of the worldly chains that bind you. When you feed the hungry, love your neighbor, forgive your enemies, house the homeless, connect with the lost, the lonely, the least, then you abide in Jesus' love and Jesus abides in you. It's a kingdom game changer when you run with God rather than away. As Barbara Brown Taylor writes, why did Jesus spend his last night on earth teaching disciples to wash feet and eat supper with him? Because after Jesus is gone, the word needs flesh. Our hands, our feet, our hearts. I had a strong experience of this yesterday when Dana and Kate and I went to Presbytery meeting and the pastor from Lawrence stood up and encouraged us to consider the earned income tax credit which Governor Brownback has threatened to repeal. And they made an argument and convinced us all that this is a credit that helps lift working people out of poverty. And I was so proud of our teaching elders and our ruling elders who unanimously endorsed sending a letter to the governor and to the legislators and to all the newspapers across Canvas, Kansas voicing our opposition to this. The opportunity came and we grabbed it quickly. The Presbytery meeting, you know, was timed well. And we Presbyterians are a voice for the oppressed and the poor who often don't have a voice in these matters. As we leave worship, we continue our worship
when we recognize that we are entering the mission field. God will be there waiting to show us the way. Let's get on board with Jonah. The game is only half over. So up on your feet and on your way. Amen. Amen.